All right, so today we're going to be working on a MacBook that has no trackpad connected. So it will work with the keyboard, but it won't work with the trackpad. And there's a couple of things that I have to mention about this when it comes to the A1502 Retina for the 2015 and 16 models, which is what we have here. Which is what we have here. Which is what we... What we... Fucking piece of shit. What we have he... What we have here. This is a 2015-16 Retina, and if we take a look at the schematic and the board view, you'll notice that there's something interesting about this model that's particularly unique to this model when it comes to the pros. So, the keyboard signal, all of this stuff over here, WS keyboard, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the keyboard does not go direct to the board and then to the CPU anymore. The keyboard goes to this chip. This chip then communicates on this I squared C line, Paul wins there, I'm going to say I squared C, to the trackpad. And then the trackpad then talks to the CPU on, uh, on another line here. So the way this works is the keyboard goes to the board. The board then sends the keyboard data to the trackpad, and then that keyboard data goes from the trackpad then back to the CPU because the board itself is too dumb to do that. It has to actually take a trip from the board to the trackpad then back from the trackpad to the computer to get to the machine. So, why is that important? Well, great question. The reason that's important is because it helps us narrow down whether or not our issue is with the trackpad, the trackpad cable, or the board itself. So why is it that I think this is a board issue? The reason I think it's a board issue is because the keyboard itself is actually working when I try to type something. And the reason that's important is because if the keyboard was not working as well, this would be a trackpad cable issue. And trackpad cable issues are very common on this machine. This cable over here that you can buy on store.rossmangroup.com, don't delay, buy today, often goes bad on these machines for no good reason, even if you didn't drop it and even if you didn't get liquid on it. So I can demonstrate here by booting into a test operating system that the keyboard itself does work fine. So I'm going to turn this thing on and go from there. Let's just do a little bit of a demonstration. Turn on, you piece of shit. Boot, you piece of shit. Boot. Any comments on the new MacBook Pro throttling? <clears throat> wow. Apple released a computer that throttles because it has insufficient cooling? No way. Paul, they released a computer that throttles. You're kidding. No fucking way. No way. I had, oh my God, call the press. Yeah. I don't believe it. Wow. Okay, yeah. I mean, come on. It's Apple. That's, this is what they do all the time. They built their company doing that shit. So as you can see, the keys on the keyboard work when I type. So the communication is working, which means the trackpad is working to some extent, which means that the cable itself is likely not the issue here. And the cable is often the issue, which is why I bring this up. Because when the cable's the issue, you won't get any keys working at all. But when I move the track, when I try to move the trackpad here, you can see that there's no cursor on the screen. So let's take a look and see what it is that I should be looking for on this board. And this is going to be the trackpad connector right here, J4802. So it looks like what I need to have here is I need to have the 8.6 volts on my trackpad fuse. So we've got 13 volts there. We're doing good. Now we need to check for PP5V S4 trackpad F. And as you can see, I, that's on the other side of the board or over here. Now here's the problem with trying to measure that. It's over, it's over here, over. So I gotta take the board out in order to tell. So what we need to do is see if we are getting five volts on this MacBook on pin 25. That's going to be on the other side of the board, down here. On dun, 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 dun. Point 0.1 volts on one side, point 0.1 volts on the other. So point 0.1 volts is no good. So now we've got to trace this back and see where it's coming from. And PP5ES4 is going to come from this MOSFET on the side, U8060. All right, so let's take a look at U8060. U8060, all right, so this is going to take PP5ES5, and it's going to turn it on. This is going to turn on this chip, which is going to let PP5ES5 go through to PP5ES4. So I need to have voltage on pin 1 
for input and voltage on pin 2 to turn it on. So let's see what I get on pin 1. So pin 1 on the MOSFET can be measured up here, 5 volts. And pin 2, which would turn it on, can be measured down here. three volts. But output, which is going to be pins 3 and 5, the output of that circuit is 0 volts. So there's two possibilities here. Behind door number 1, there's a short circuit to ground, which I can check for right here. And what do you know? There is a short circuit to ground. Hmm. Well, what's causing that short circuit to ground? Or which side is it on? 2.3 ohms. Interesting, interesting. So, how are we going to find where that short circuit to ground is? Well, let's see what goes to ground on that line. So we have PP5V S5 FET. It's going to be coming out on pin 5. So that's going to come out on pin 5 and go here. That goes here where there is a capacitor to ground, C4864. So that capacitor could be it. Or uh, what else? That capacitor could be it under there. Or it could be something along the actual inside the board itself. So there's not a lot of choices here. Now, as you can see, what's interesting is that we have this little defect spot on the board right here. I'm not sure if this is a, really a defect. I'm just guessing because this part, part that's exposed a little up here, see that? You probably only see it if I zoom in more. Let me just get the multimeter off the screen to remove everything that's going to be distracting you from what I want to show you. You see that? It's like a little hole, but it's not a natural hole. Like these are the natural holes for, the, for things to be traveling from one side of the board to the other. But this here, it just looks like some broken-ass looking pothole. That's no good. And that's probably going to cause a breakdown in the system working. No good. So the only way we can really figure out what it is, and keep in mind, there's not a lot on this line, is by knocking the things off that go to ground. And the only things that go to ground on this line are this capacitor and this capacitor. So it's not like we have a lot that we can guess on. So I'm going to knock those two off. I'm going to turn on my fume extractor before I do so and see if we can make this board work again. All right, so we're going to remove these two capacitors. And if it's still messed up, that means that the short circuit is actually inside the board, at which point this will go to pull. No, we'll, we'll, we'll destroy that short inside the board. I think I used the last one recently. All right. Let's see if we still have a short circuit to ground. One pin on ground, other pin over here, and 2.1 ohms. Okay, then. Seems like our short circuit is going to be inside the... Really? I mean, there's not a lot of places for that to be bad. Okay, let's see what side it's on. Let's see what side it's on. How about that? Let's at least try and narrow down where the short circuit is. So is the short circuit going to be... Um, is it going to be on the cr this side or this side? I can't tell as long as this damn ferrite bead is on the board. So, Okay, so we're going to figure out what side this thing is on. Okay, so let's see which side the short circuit is on. Are you on this side or on this side? Okay, so this is interesting. So these two things I knocked off, I actually didn't need to knock off because 
the things I knocked off were on this side. The short is on this side. So it's going to be something on here. So what are the things that go to ground? So the only other thing it could be is this stupid little MOSFET. What for? No oh. Did Alex, and Alex didn't leave a note? Are you beating Alex right now? I'm going to. Go, and, go with Steve and beat the crap out of Alex. And take a weapon with you. Where's the yes. my, my grandpa made this for my dad, and my dad gave it to me. You're going to use this to make sure Alex learns his lesson, okay? This isn't good enough. This is, a pure, this is pure titanium. <laughs> this, will, this will break through all different types of stuff. This is what they make for the screws that go on people's shoulders to fix their rotator cuff. So I bestow upon you the stick. Now, Alex didn't put a label on the machine. How much time did you spend to, to looking for this machine? Like 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah. All right. Make sure he learns his lesson. Go. You and Steve. Steve, hold him down. All right. The only thing that could be on that line now is the MOSFET. That's the last thing left. So it's got to be that. So let's, we're going to take this, and we're going to remove it. And I think that's going to be it. Because if we look over here, you'll see that the only other thing on that line that goes to, actually, you know, it could be this capacitor. Crap. Yeah, it could be C4803. So let's see what C4803 looks like. Damn it. I got excited too soon. All right. C4803. Wait, no, I removed that. Yeah, I removed this, and I removed this. And that capacitor is on the... Okay. I removed this thing on PP5ES4 trackpad. I removed this thing on here. Okay, so the only thing left that it can be, the only thing left that goes to ground is U8060. Someone says, this is how Amazon's warehouse's HR department works. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Bezos didn't make $100 billion by being a nice guy. Poor Alex. Do you hear any screaming yet? I don't hear any screaming. Daniel. Oh. I should hear screaming. There should be lots of screaming. Oh, this is still a customer. Okay. So wait wait until the wait until all the customers are gone and then just you know what do you think that's a little harsh or do you think that's just right? Do you ever talk to Hi Hi from Chat Paul? Yeah. I offered him a job and he didn't take it. What? Why not? He probably has some executive job that pays way better than what I get paid. But. It must be on Wall Street or something. Okay, now the short circuit is gone. So since the short circuit is gone, I'm going to put the MOSFET back, I'm going to put these two caps back, and I'm going to put the inductor back in place, and we should have a working trackpad. I can't understand how anybody that watches these videos would decline a job opportunity or a job offer. Like, why wouldn't you want to work here? Why, after would, you, why would you not want to be the next one beating you with a stick? Why would you not want to be the next person that comes to work here? I don't understand. It's like we, we, we post all these videos and we show how great the morale is and the, and the company culture. And There's a one beer minimum for lunch. Okay, let's get a donor board that has all my little pieces on it. I'm glad they stopped using that glass kind of MOSFET for this because that thing is so easy to crack and break taking it off.
Ew, what is this gooey shit? I'll come off in the cleaner. All right. Now it's time to see if there's a trackpad here. All right, so let's see if the trackpad moves, and it moves! It moves around the screen, which means that we're done, so it looks like we had a short to ground on the 5 volt line required for the trackpad to work, and after we removed the MOSFET that was the offender, it works again, and we have a trackpad, and it's beautiful. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. <laughs>